this is Jane Mudgett. I'm really glad you're here today. I'm a coach, I'm an author, and I'm a presenter. And today on Coach to Coach or C to C, we have a terrific guest. Her name is Stephanie Arnold DeVergis. Hi, Steph. Glad Hello. you're here. Hi, Jane. I know Stephanie from our community, both in Oklahoma, but also she does work nationally. And she primarily devotes her efforts as a, as a management consultant and as a certified facilitator. She works with local, state, and federal governments and nonprofit organizations. And she really helps them from a both qualitative end and her quantitative skills. She is an unbelievable strategic thinker, and she really helps organizations with problem solving at a big picture level, and then working that down conscientiously to manage really details of projects. So welcome, Steph. I'm really glad you're here. Thank you, Jane. It's great to be here. Well, today we're going to continue our discussion on leadership and what, what makes for positive leaders. And one of the things that we've really been thinking about, rather than just textbook things, is what, what does it mean to do our best work as a leader? And so we've had a little extra time this year because of the pandemic and, and not driving as much and, and working from home to think a little bit, or I should say at least have time to think a little bit more internally. And what we came up with was that, that many leaders need to spend some time on self-reflection and being more self-aware. And once they invest that time, it helps them step up to more complex problem solving. Tell me what your thoughts are on how to step up so we can be our best work, at, do our best work and, and have that self-awareness. Okay, thank you, Jane. So we're making the assumption that everyone wants to do their best work or do okay. the most good, which I think is reasonable. I mean, that's why right. people um, engage, they seek out the work that they seek out. Um, and and like, just like you said, in order to do that, it's so essential to bring your best self. And if we think about our lives today, we've had an opportunity in the last few months, probably, like you said, to step back a little bit, maybe do a little bit more processing and a little bit more pondering and a little bit more upending conventional right. thinking right? And, um, and being more creative. And sometimes we're doing that alone and then we're, we're bringing that before others and working with other people. So what I see and feel is most important is that just to be able to do our best work, we have to bring our best selves because we have to be able to receive input from others and value input from others. And so we need to be in, in the right place to be able to do that. If I come into a planning meeting or into any initiative and I am convinced that I'm the only one that might have the answers or I'm convinced that um, things need to go only the way that I see them, then I'm missing an opportunity to bring about the best end product, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so um, when we talk about, you know, analyzing complex business processes or doing some real analysis of possible scenarios in our business, we have to be open to both really positive scenarios and negative scenarios. Mm -hmm. And we have to be able to be in that complexity and stay keen and agile. Mm -hmm. And what we talk about a lot is that probably overused phrase self-care. Yeah. Um, however, it is so very vital that we come to our work with a sense of self-regulation and a, a good sense mm -hmm. of balance. Mm -hmm. And especially right now, I would say it seems as though we are looking at new ways of solving problems, new ways of coming together. Um, we're coming together around tables mm -hmm. virtually. Mm -hmm. We're coming mm -hmm. we're, we're 
required to find new ways to engage. And that's really challenging because one of the best ways that we can understand, feel, and work with others is to be physically present with them. And we'll hopefully we'll get back to that. Right. right. But in the meantime, we know that we have a lot of complex problems. And I, when you and I were speaking previously, I liked the way you talked about when something is complicated, you have something complicated to deal with. You can think of it, that's usually something that's linear, right. that you might think of a solution in terms of linear. And if you are working on something that's complex, it's not just a linear path, it's digging deeper into layers. And so we know that right. there are a lot of things that require um, some difficult digging and right. some um, going through some difficult conversations. And if we haven't already done some work with ourselves, it can be really challenging to be able to bring our best selves to any project and work with others and in, in order to get the best results. Yeah. So you're asking how right. does a person pre prepare? Right. And I think one of the best ways, I kind of liken it to, if you do strategic planning for an organization, mm -hmm. take those same principles and apply it to yourself. And the okay. first thing you do when you want to do any kind of planning is do an assessment okay. of where, where are you personally? Are you emotionally regulated? Are you um, finding that you're easily triggered by things? Are you feeling burned out? Are you feeling like you're really struggling with different personalities in the workplace or um, problem solving. People are entrenched in their views and you are as well. And I think it's important just to be able to assess oneself and be really honest okay. and know what some of your issues, if you will, are that you may be bringing from past work projects or past relationships or past difficult conversations or maybe the project you were on that never went quite as well mm -hmm. as you thought it should yeah. have yeah and evaluating what am I carrying from that from the past into today then that takes a lot of self-reflection maybe some inner work maybe that means time on one's own right um, and we you know hopefully we have a little bit more time like that right now Mm -hmm. um, and for a lot of people, that requires a certain opportunity to have some space and maybe a place that's meaningful for them to go within and do some work to think about what am I bringing from my past experiences into this current situation and how useful is it? And I think one of the things that you mentioned is this preparation time is it, it reminded me of two things that have been advised to me over the years. And it's, it's the preparation of meeting materials is one thing, but you're talking about preparation of self. And mm -hmm. that may mean the day before of thinking about that meeting, particularly if it's an important gathering of folks where you wanna have a few efficient use of everyone's time and of words, that you have some mental preparation then, but then that also means to have a, sort of a grounding or a reset before going into that meeting. Are you talking about both occasions conceivably? Well, I think I'm talking, I'm talking most about bringing yourself through the door into a meeting in, in the right place. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. That, that can mean making sure you're grounded, making sure you've maybe envisioned in your mind, how you think the meeting might go, envision who might be in the room when you step in, if you have some awareness of that, envision mm -hmm. the dynamics that you mm -hmm. might be walking into, mm -hmm. envision um, the, the possibility that some, that um, emotions might run high mm -hmm. and anticipate, you know, how will you handle yourself in those situations? Right. And I find that visualization is really, really beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, I also find I, I do my best thinking when I'm out in nature and 
for example, taking a walk Mm -hmm. or um, people talk about forest bathing. I mean, there are lots of ways to kind of step away from all that's going on in your mind and get some clarity. And one significant way to do that, if it's possible, is find a way to be in some connection with with nature, because sometimes that helps us just to strip away things that that are unnecessary and get down to what's really vital to think about. And sometimes that kind of clarity can give us a breath of fresh air, literally and figuratively. Yeah, yeah. To take back into a conversation or problem solving. Well, it's interesting you say that because I've talked to a lot of folks lately about creativity and innovation mm-hmm. and with, without exception, they talk about needing this, this quiet time of sort of mm-hmm. just, just sort of thinking and dreaming often outside mm-hmm. so that they don't have distractions of technology and phones mm-hmm. and that it gives them a chance to sort of clear out their mind, clear the space and when there's when there's less traffic, less mental traffic, there's room for these new ideas. And I think one of the things you're implying, and when I've seen you in action as a certified facilitator, because you have to be neutral, that mm-hmm. is an interesting position for a leader also going in as a neutral person mm-hmm. who is open to a variety of thoughts and opinions and ideas not just the not just their own, right? Not just right. coming in holding those bags and saying this is it, which is defeats the whole purpose of having the meeting to begin with, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Right. One of the one of the hallmarks of what I do, I try to be as inclusive and as transparent as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also try very hard to remain that neutral third person facilitator when I'm engaging in a professional facilitation. Mm-hmm. And yes, that can be, that can be really challenging because of course I have, you know, understanding and opinions and emotions, but it's also so important. I think even if you're the leader in the room, that you're the CEO, it's important to recognize that you have the people around you for a reason. And if they're, they're worth being on your team, they were also worth listening to. And that's something that, I just, again, think you have to be at your best self. And it doesn't mean when I say stepping away and clearing your head, if you could go float on a kayak, that's great. But for a lot of people, it just means stepping out and walking around the block. Um, Maybe it even means just opening a window and breathing in fresh air if you have that, that opportunity. So. Right. I remember being in the car rental business and walking around the building (laughs) because mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what I had read, readily available and people would comment there's Jane walking outside the building and, and they knew that e- either I had to blow off some steam or I just mm-hmm. needed to calm my mind to to get some new ideas and creativity well right how, how can we use this if we bring our best selves into work and we really try to do our best work What's our, what's our next step if, if we have these hard decisions to make, whether it's improving processes or working on strategic planning or organization uh, assessments? Uh, are, there, are there ways that we can shift to being more open to the complex thinking? By the way, I, w- I was thinking a phrase of that as process and pinball. So a process is more linear and then mm-hmm. the complex is more pinball. Mm-hmm. Any other tips that you could that you might share if we're in a good place grounded to go forward? Well, I think it's appropriate here to talk about safety. Okay. And I don't so much mean physical safety, but emotional safety. I think that's when we do our own work, we come, we are able to be a safe place for other people. Okay. And I think that's so important, especially when you're working to be inclusive and transparent and when you're working on really complex issues and it's not just some linear clarity, it's that complexity that requires levels to be revealed and might require some really difficult interpersonal relations. Um, I think that one thing is stay in the game. Um, It really helps if people are willing to stay and do the hard work. Mm-hmm. Um, to work through a complex problem. And so the, the more that 
you do your own work, you can come into a situation and stay, stay present, stay engaged and stay committed even when it gets really, really difficult. And that shows others that you're, you're a safe and welcoming place for, let's say people have new ideas or different ideas or outlier thinking yeah, um, we've all been in those conversations where you know the majority of the room is really invested in one outcome, and somebody has a really out of the box thought, and it's so um, it's so important to be a safe place to hear and listen to everybody. And mm-hmm. so much is being turned on its head right now. You talked about when you would walk around your workplace in the past, and now. Um, you know, we used to think maybe it was kind of odd to say, Jane, do you want to have a walk and talk meeting or, you know, meet me at the river and we'll, we'll go talk through this. Right well, now we, we just, we have to be as creative as we can be. I mean, mm-hmm. at one point I know I, I was planning to get a document to you and I thought I could walk down a path and find C. Jane's yard and paper airplane it to her. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, I, I scanned it and sent it and set instead, but right. You, you know, we just really need to be open, but that takes so much work and it takes, um, it takes a presence that's kind of unconventional and mm-hmm. that unconventional requires us to be safe and um, be safe ourselves to right. feel safe in order to contribute, but also to be a safe place, be able to make a safe place for others. Mm-hmm. Well, what I'd like to do is take a little bit of a turn, uh, Mm -hmm. and that is one of the things you're implying is creating a culture of an organization that is the safe place where where we can, where we know we're in a trusting world or trusting space. Mm -hmm. Um, If for some reason the organization does not have that culture, a lot of people push back and say, we can't do this here. And what I'm picking up from you, and tell me if I'm wrong, but we can establish a culture within the meeting itself. So whether we're the leader or on the team, Mm -hmm. we can develop our own little culture so that, I mean, one of the things that uh, I remember very distinctly at an organization where I worked is new ideas were sort of like mistakes. You know, they just Mm -hmm. weren't um uh they weren't rewarded they were pushed off to the side because it mm-hmm. required us to think think a- away from our norm so the culture in that meeting can be one where wow new ideas are welcome and solicited even if they mm-hmm. may seem wild that outlier you referred to so right can, can we have a meeting culture which is different than the company culture Absolutely. I mean, that often depends on who's leading or facilitating or chairing a meeting, but you can absolutely set that culture. If you can't do it organizationally, you can do it within specific conversations. And when you were mentioning that, my first thought was we've all heard about the studies in manufacturing or um, the uh, studies in the oil field about safety. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very vital. Um, and I'm talking about safety, like OSHA related in terms right. of on the job bodies. Access. And right. if people don't have this, the, the emotional safety of trust with their colleagues, they won't bring up a concern because right. they're not sure. And then something happens. So the more that you can, you can have a relationship. I mean, I always say everything boils down to communication and relationships. Right. If we can offer the relationships with one another that bring about a lot of trust, we're going to feel safer figuratively, be safer literally, and we're going to be more creative. And then the end product is going to be better. So absolutely, there are things that you can do when you, when you simply have a meeting within your division or your group you can set norms for that meeting or right. you, know, you can call them the, these are the boundaries for our conversation or the, the rules of engagement, or, you know, I've worked with groups and we've called them the rules of friendship and it's, you know, don't interrupt people, put your phone away, but also um, be open to new ideas. Let's, let's let everything flow and be a safe place. Right. And then 
take the time to work through it. But that's, you know, we're all about efficiency. Let's get things done. Let's work fast. And we have the motivation sometimes of time and urgency. And that can fly in the face of right. relationships and communication and safety. So it does take a concerted effort. And it would take a few minutes at the beginning of a meeting to say, how do we want to talk to each other today? How do we want to allow each other? How do, how do we want to engage? And, and that can be everything from making sure we're going to hear from everybody around the table, not just the most dominant right. voices, but find out, you know, what is Judith thinking? She's always so quiet. Well, she's, she also has so much to offer, even if right. she's not the one that always comes first with an idea. So right. it, it's really important to draw people out, but I also think you can, you can do that in the beginning of a meeting or conversation and make that part of your agenda that we're going right. to, we're going to just decide, decide how we want to talk to each other. Yeah. So how I understand what you're saying and to recap is a couple of things. So we could send out some meeting guidelines in advance, or at least a draft so that folks know in advance that we're going to mention that. Mm -hmm. When we get to the meeting, we can review those again so we know what these rules of engagement are. So just in general, that we're developing a culture, this environment of trust within this mm -hmm. meeting itself, in addition to the agenda and the goals of the meeting. Mm -hmm. But as a point of preparation, if we are the leader or a leader slash facilitator, then we may need to spend some time right before that meeting, making sure that we are grounded that we are self-aware, that we are self-regulated and, and are open to all of these ideas, even if it means that we may have to ask someone to stand down a little bit and to ask others to contribute just based on their nature. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that what I really, really hit home, Steph, is that this idea that you can control the culture of a meeting Mm -hmm. And how you can do that by personally becoming more self-aware as a leader. Any, right. any final pearls you want to add before we wrap up? Well, I would just summarize by saying, I think, Jane, you can control the culture of any engagement simply by controlling you and, mm. and showing up as your very best self and having that ability to approach a person with an open mind with you know being emotionally centered and regulated and being ready to engage in a, right. in a safe way so right. you whether it's even one-on-one -on -one or a big group conversation absolutely if you go right. inward and do do some work to prepare yourself you can change that conversation you can change your community and eventually you can change the world, but it takes a lot of work. And it takes one person from within. And I so appreciate you, Steph, Stephanie Arnold Divergis, for sharing that with me because my the light that came on for me is I do quite a bit of that before public speaking. Mm -hmm but I don't necessarily do that on one-on-one -on -one engagements and in group engagements. And, and that's the light bulb that went off for me. So thank you so right. much for sharing your time and expertise. And I really look forward to more discussions and we now know it may be along the walking trail. So thanks, that's right. for, be thanks that's for being right. here today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.